Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing another way overdue five book recommendations video, this one focusing on my favourite topic, literary fiction. For those of you who don't know, I do five book recommendation videos here on my channel. If you're wanting five random book recommendations within most genres, then check out my playlist. We have covered a whole host of things. Literary fiction, historical fiction, classics, poetry, fantasy, children's, a bunch. So I am very excited to be sharing with you these five books today. I think they are all fab. Let's get into it. So the first book that I'm going to be recommending today is Ask... <laughs> Oh my god. So as you can see, that says Song of Achilles. Quick story time, earlier this year I was trying to get Cameron to read this book for ages, he kept saying he would and then he kept not doing it. One time he said to me that he was definitely going to read it next and then he said to me, please will you pass me the Song of Achilles? So I went to the bookshelf, picked up this book, wrote the Song of Achilles on it and handed it to him. Clearly we have never taken this little piece of paper off, so here we are. I'm going to do that now. So today I am going to be recommending Ask Again Yes by Mary Beth Keen. So this is essentially my ideal literary fiction novel. It was one of my best reads of 2019. I absolutely adore it and I want more people to read it. This follows two families from a suburban town in America from the 1970s up until present day. It looks at the relationship between the adults in the families as well as a strong bond that forms between two of the children in the families, as well as a tragedy that occurs and haunts all of these family members for many years to come. So this is a character-focused novel, it explores family relationships most primarily, but there is also this dash of drama thrown in as well. So perfect. The characters in here are centre stage, you get to know all of them so well. Seeing the ways in which they all have to change and adapt due to everything that goes on in here is so well done, I was totally convinced. The novel explores themes of marriage and intimacy and forgiveness and it has one of the best romantic relationships I have ever read about. It is so raw and real feeling, the relationship is tested in so many ways throughout this book but both people really make an effort to remain tender and understanding and generous towards one another. Friendship, parenthood and illness are also explored, memory is a big theme in this novel which is one of my favourite things to read about, it explores how memories change when people grow and their perspectives change and this adds a really nice extra dimension of unreliability to the narrative in sections as well which I really enjoy. Such a luminous wonderful novel, if if you enjoy Celeste Ng then you must give this book a go, or alternatively if you wanted to like Celeste Ng but you were a tiny bit disappointed then try this one. Oh and I will add that Cameron did end up reading this book and of course he loved it. Next. I'm going to be recommending Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. This is the newest book on this list, I read it very recently, it only came out in the past couple of months and I am in love with it. This is a coming of age novel following a young boy called Shuggy Bane who grows up in Thatcher era 1980s Glasgow. We follow Shuggy throughout his childhood years into his teenage years and most primarily explore his relationship with his mother. So this is is the longest book on the list, I believe. It is a bit of a chunker for those of you who like that kind of thing. Again, it is very character focused. The characters of Shuggy and his mother in particular are so wonderful. I was utterly enthralled by their relationship with one another and witnessing all of their struggles and triumphs. This book captures a specific time and place so well. It is one of the most sympathetic and effective accounts of alcoholism and working class families that I have ever read. I was fascinated by the political and social commentary throughout, it is very relevant to its time, 
but is sadly very relevant to today as well in many ways. The writing in here is also stunning. I still cannot believe that this is a debut. It feels very accomplished. There were many moments in here that I had to go back and reread. So impressive. I was just so convinced by this novel, utterly transported to where the characters were. It's hard hitting, emotional, important, big, big recommend. Next up, I'm going to be recommending Praise Song for the Butterflies by Bernice L. McFadden. Set in West Africa, this novel follows the story of a young girl called Abio who is sent to a religious shrine as a sacrifice when bad luck befalls her family. Abio is enslaved in the shrine for 15 years before she is finally freed and enters the world again. So I discovered Bernice L. McFadden a couple of years ago when she was longlisted for the Women's Prize and I I absolutely fell in love with her. This is probably the least known book on this list, I would say, and I am desperate for more people to read it. It deserves your time. This novel is educational and eye-opening, at least it was for me. The practice of ritual servitude in Africa is obviously explored in here, something I found to be so fascinating and shocking. But this is also just a gripping story with gorgeous characters. Abio in particular is such a great character. You get to see her develop from when she is very young to when she is a woman. You totally grow to care for her and sympathise with her and really root for her. The side characters in here are all very interesting. There are tons of different perspectives from people connected to Abio thrown in here. The plot is shocking and engaging. It is very emotionally impactful and the prose is beautiful as well. I remember thinking while reading that it kind of read like a Carl Head Yossini book, which is high praise. If this book sounds interesting to you, then definitely give it a go. It is not an easy read by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it's fab. Recommendation number four is Long Bright River by Liz Moore. This is for those of you who want something a bit more plot driven, a bit more thriller feeling perhaps. Perhaps you tend to read genre fiction and are fancying something a bit more on the literary side, or perhaps you tend to read literary fiction and are wanting something a bit darker and more crime feeling. This novel follows the story of two sisters who live in Philadelphia. One of the sisters lives on the streets and is addicted to heroin, and the other sister is a police officer. At the beginning of the novel, the sister who lives on the streets goes missing, and the other sister starts investigating a string of murders in the area. Like Shuggy Bane, this is also a relatively new novel. It came out earlier this year. You may have seen it doing the rounds. I read it earlier this year and very much enjoyed it. For me, it felt like a very good balance between being page turning and intriguing, while also exploring very well drawn and interesting characters. The structuring in this book is very cool. We switch around in perspectives quite a lot and move move around in time. So throughout the book you get to slowly build up a full picture of these sisters' lives. It also explores a lot of very interesting and important themes such as abuse and drug addiction and sex work. I'm not a crime reader basically at all and I enjoyed this so I would definitely recommend other people giving it a go. And the final book that I'm going to be recommending today is Tin Man by Sarah Winman. So I realised that I hadn't recommended this book in one of my literary fiction five book recommendations videos and it is my favourite literary fiction novel of all time so it had to happen. This is a contemporary novel that follows the lives and relationships of two men, Ellis and Michael, who have been best friends ever since they met in Oxford at 12 years old. Half of the novel is told from Ellis's point of view, the other half is told from Michael's point of view. We jump around in time from adulthood to childhood and throughout the novel we get to build up a full picture of what happened to these two men. So I'm sure you have all heard enough about this book by now. It is a 
booktube darling but it really is so beautiful this is a very short novel it is very simple and quiet in a lot of ways but it is one of the most impactful things I have ever read. Everything about this novel is perfection to me. It is an exquisite portrayal of friendship and love and understanding. It has the most wonderfully drawn characters who are so flawed and feel so beautifully real. The writing is stunning. It is so understated but captures everything so well and leaves just the right amount of room for the reader to meet the author halfway. I just can't recommend this book more highly. I truly think it is a little masterpiece. If you love character focused literary fiction novels and love being hit in the feels, then read this one. So there we have five more of my literary fiction book recommendations. I really hope you enjoyed hearing about them. As I said at the beginning of the video, please check out my playlist if you're interested in hearing more of my random book recommendations. I will be doing more of these videos soon. I have one planned for more classic recommendations and one planned for more historical fiction recommendations as well. As always, please do let me know what you think about these books and let us know some of your best literary fiction book recommendations as well. We can all learn from each other in the comments. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I appreciate you all. I hope you're all having nice weeks and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye.